Many have asked the question, is there gold under Melbourne? Yes. Yes, there is. Melbourne is basically the city of traffic and basalt. That's really all you see. Minus the few places where sedimentary rocks peek their heads out. In fact, close to half the state of Victoria is covered in basalt. This is very recent though, with these eruptions occurring only within the past 7 million years. Prior to that, uh, Victoria was a very boring place. If you're a fan of change, that is. It basically sat more or less undisturbed in a geological sense for tens to hundreds of millions of years. And in that time, you can bet that gold flowed through the ancient land that would one day host the city of Melbourne. In this video, I'm going to discuss the gold field that definitely exists under Melbourne. And it's been found too. The real issue isn't whether or not gold exists, it's whether or not you can access it, and more importantly, whether or not it's payable. The earliest accounts of gold existing in Victoria occurred during the 1840s. Shepherds and farm labourers would stumble across nuggets inside waterways or they'd see visible gold inside quartz rocks. Mining was illegal back then, as gold and all metals were the property of the crown and the discovery of gold was also actively discouraged. But as always, there's people who gave a big middle finger to the rules. And one of the first was a fella known as Gum the Gold Hunter. He lived in a hut in Plenty Ranges, now known as the Warrandyte Goldfields, and he'd be doing his thing over there. And along with this, a secretive underground black market trade existed, and many shepherds and farm labourers would sell it to jewellers in Melbourne on the Hush Hush. Then, in the 1850s, New South Wales discovered it had gold, and Victoria's hand was finally forced. They had to find and release their own gold discoveries in order to not lose all of their skilled labour to the rushes that were occurring in New South Wales. And it was around this time that gold would be found in Melbourne. Here's the issue though. One of the first regulations that existed back during those early days which governed gold mining in Victoria, stated that mining could not take place within one mile of a settlement or station that was in existence prior to the discovery of gold. And thus, this made any mining illegal, as Melbourne and its surrounding suburbs already existed back then. And this is more or less what halted the real discovery here. The first discovery of gold near Melbourne's CBD was thought to be a fluke. A labourer in Richmond discovered gold whilst digging a post hole. Now, many stories were complete furfies, but some of them were legitimate finds. And there is no question about it, there was definitely gold under Melbourne. Take this article from the Argus posted on Monday the 28th of July in 1851. Gold was found in the soil at the western end of Burke Street, and the guy who discovered it well, it's the same fella who claimed to have been the discoverer of the Bendigo Goldfield. Then, in August of 1851, in a lane in Lonsdale Street between Exhibition and Spring Street, a white rock fragment was poking out of the ground, and two children came across it and dug it out with a stick. They saw a quote, pretty thing in it, and they showed their mother, who then took it to a jeweller for examination. A man named Mr. Crate in Swanston Street tested it, weighed it, and pronounced it to be a pure specimen weighing just over half an ounce. Now you can just imagine how many people walked past this quartz rock that had half an ounce of gold inside it without realising. As previously mentioned, mining was banned in Melbourne, but people still dug in spite of the law. Several folks from the localities where discoveries were made set to work and found, at a depth of only 18 inches from the surface, a bed of dark quartz, which generated massive excitement, which was then never mentioned or spoken about again. And thus no one knows what the heck happened here, but suppression is a possibility, and the most probable culprit to this fizzling out of course. Regardless of this, things still began to get a little out of control. Lonsdale Street and the northern end of town began to change to something more resembling a gold rush city. Claims of gold finds were continually made. One of gold being found at Lonsdale Street was made near the old treasury building, by a digger that had worked the grounds in Ballarat. He spotted the same bluish clay that he had encountered in Ballarat, and out of curiosity, tested a few lumps of it and found specks of gold inside. 
This sparked a rush, and several parties began to work with pick and shovel. And one man was witness to have extracted a nugget that was the size of a large pea. A reporter that was on the scene concluded that there is no doubt whatsoever that there is gold there and in large abundance. On the 2nd of September in 1853, gold had been discovered on Emerald Hill in South Melbourne. Half a dozen small nuggets, with the largest being about half the size of a small pea, were presented to a reporter for the Argus. At one time, about 100 persons had assembled there, and our reporter saw and heard of in the possession of various persons as many as about 50 nuggets. Besides this, he saw gold in all various stages of washing. Several applications to get the right to dig were made, but all were met with stiff refusal. Eventually, the law cracked down and stopped any further digging here. It seems like this area of Melbourne is quite auriferous, as at the west end of Lonsdale Street, as you approach Flagstaff Hill, another find would be made. One find in 1856 was responsible for breaking up a church service, and by the time it was over, over a hundred of the parishioners were out digging using whatever implements they had on them to prize specks of gold from the familiar blue-tinged clay. By the early 1860s, gold had been found in the footpath of Hoddle Street, at Paran Railway Station, on Batman's Hill, which is now the site of Spencer Street Station, and at Templestowe and Heidelberg. But these finds didn't raid as much of a sensation anymore. A man offered a geological explanation in 1862 for the presence of gold in Melbourne and its suburbs. He noticed the absence of gravel in Melbourne. And by studying rail and road cuttings in Paran and Richmond, he predicted that a large deep lead ran through Melbourne to the bay. And he proposed prospecting under the basalt and adjacent to the high ground furthest from the present day Yarra River. In later decades, boreholes were sunk to find this, but nothing really ever came up. So where's the gold coming from? Well, everywhere. The man who offered an explanation for the presence of gold was right to some extent. There sure are plenty of rivers that were buried in the past 7 million years as volcanic eruptions roared forth and oozed lava time and time again, burying pretty much everything in its way. But what the man didn't realise is that, well, Melbourne is a gold field, as much as any other part of Victoria is. It was as much involved in the cycles of tectonic collision and later mineralisation as all of the other parts of Victoria are. It's just all under basalt. And this is cool, but it also sucks, because the basalt is deep and tough as anything to break through. So how were shallow deposits found? Well, if you look at the locations where they were actually found and overlay a geological map, you can see a bit of a trend. And that is, they were all pretty much found in areas with either no basalty cover or with very little. It's not so much that Melbourne had the old Yarra making it auriferous, as it is the fact that Melbourne is itself auriferous. And there are many examples where the strange gold mines that dot Melbourne, of which there are a few by the way, were all found in areas where basalty cover was non-existent or very shallow in its deposition. So really, the gold that was found was found in the Silurian geological area that was outcropping in Melbourne, which is over 440 million years old and was deposited around the time that Victoria began to become as gold enriched as it would turn out to be. So, as you can see, we have the typical basaltic cover that's seen around much of Victoria here, and the Tullamarine basalt flow in orange over here. The purple though is the Silurian Melbourne formation, and if there's mineralisation and quartz veins that shot through this formation, like it did with the Castle Main group that we see in the richest gold fields from Ballarat to Bendigo, then it's this sedimentary layer that would host it. And as you can see, very little of this purple layer exists in Melbourne, as the vast majority of it is covered in basaltic flows. That is, until we go a little east, and what do you know? There's the Warrandyte Goldfields. Just another example of the fact that these deposits were always here, and are just a natural part of the land like they are in Ballarat, Castle Main, or Bendigo. It's just covered in that cheeky basalt. So grab a shovel and dig your nice little garden or your freshly mowed turf in your backyard in Melbourne. You might just find some good gold right underneath ya. It's worth a go at the very least. Thanks for watching.